behind this camera. Hey everyone, John Reed here, astronomer, host of Learn to Stargaze here on YouTube, and author of the Things to See with a Telescope series. Well, ZWO has just sent me their new Seastar S30 telescope, and I'm gonna put it to the test. Now, I love my Seastar S50. The fact that I can just toss it in the car, set it up in seconds, and be imaging a comet or other objects in minutes is just amazing. And this telescope not only uses the exact same software, but is smaller, more portable, and less expensive, coming in at just 350 US dollars. In context, this is the same price as a single piece of astrophotography gear. For example, I once needed to attach a camera to a Skywatcher Evolux, a beginner astrophotography telescope. The field platinum required to connect the camera to the telescope was $370. That's $20 more than the entire Seastar S50. This telescope is possibly one of the only exceptions to astrophotographer Dylan O'Donnell's 500 rule. Is it over 500 bucks? No, it's crap. See this? This is way more than 500. 500 bucks? I'll keep it. Now I'm a little late to the game here. Big astronomer YouTubers like Damon Scotting and Queev the Lazy Geek have already put this telescope to the test on their amazing channels. And several S30 versus S50 videos have already been posted. So my goal for this video is to run this telescope through a series of imaging routines. I'll show a screen capture on one side of the screen so you can see exactly how I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm specifically interested in a few features I haven't tried before on any telescope, even my S50, such as mosaic mode and in-app denoising. And most shockingly, it looks like this telescope can even track planes and drones as shown in Luca's video here. Well, let's get started. This is Learn to Stargaze. But first, let's check the weather. Most of Nova Scotia starting in the snow. Oh, a God. nor'easter as it tracks to our oh, south. My. I think we need to get out of Canada from the east and north fast. North. Booking tickets to California, Toronto Hi. Airport, endless hallways. All right, so it's our first clear night here in California. And one of the downsides here is that it's Christmas. And if you look at a lot of the houses around here, they've got a whole bunch of lights out. Okay, so I've got the sea star. <laughs> I just need to find a place to set it up. And I think there's a set of steps here. Maybe this rock. All right, so the skies are finally dark here in Northern California and we've got the sea star set up at the very top of my father-in-law's garden. There's quite a few trees around, but we do have the Andromeda galaxy straight overhead. So the first thing we need to do is calibrate the sea star. We're gonna click on the sea star itself, go to advanced features, calibrate, and I'm gonna start with the compass calibration. I'm gonna set the phone down here. We basically just need to spin the telescope around a bunch of times. And I assume it's basically trying to figure out the difference between true north and magnetic north. The second thing we need to do is check the level. Please level your sea star. Now we can do this just by adjusting these legs. I'm gonna tilt them up. There seems to be enough friction that they don't slip. There we go, that seems like it's enough. Now let's send it over to Andromeda. So I'm gonna hit stargazing. Let's try galaxies and Andromeda, go gazing. I gotta get out of the way. It should be about straight overhead. Okay, it's doing its horizontal calibration, and I assume this is for the tracking, so it's gonna spin a few degrees one way, take a photograph of the sky, plate solve it, spin a few degrees the other, take a photo, and plate solve it. So in total, the calibration seemed to take around two minutes. Now the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to try is mosaic mode. There we go. All right, so we know it's pointed at the Andromeda galaxy. I'm gonna stop that. To do the mosaic, we're gonna go over to the map feature here, and we're gonna hit framing. Make this all the way big to 2X, and now we can rotate the frame here. That's gonna be cool. And now we have to hit go to again. Object. So now I think we just leave it for a while. All right, there's our first frame in the mosaic. Well, I'm gonna let this go. I'm gonna turn off that filming light and we'll come back 
in a few minutes. All right, so the sea star has been running here for about two hours on Andromeda. According to this, we've collected 47 minutes and 20 seconds of exposure over that time. And it looks like here we're just working on filling in the corners and then we'll be done. However, we have been losing some exposures. Not sure why I haven't been sitting on this rock or anything while this has been running. It has been getting colder and colder out here. So normally that would be a sign that we should be readjusting our focus. All right, we're gonna come back in 15 or 20 minutes or so and see if it finishes up. All right, it's been two hours and 30 minutes and it looks like it's almost done. I may know why it's been dropping frames. I think it's getting a little dewy back here. I wonder if I can turn on the dew heater. Anti-dew, there we go. All right, I think that's it for tonight. I'm gonna pack this up and get everything fully charged and hopefully we have another clear night tomorrow. So I've got the scope in scenery mode and we're going to try to track this drone that Isaac got for Christmas here. So, oh, there it is. Okay, so if I hit track, the object is at the altitude limit. What does that mean? Okay. All right, well, we lost the drone before we got that one. All right, we found the drone. We flew up the lane, hit these trees. There it is. Marco. Marco. I guess it helps to turn it on first. Oh, okay. Keep it there. Got it. Track. Oh, that's so cool. All right. It is not in focus. We hit autofocus. There we go. Let's see if it autofocuses well. Ooh, there we go. It, Seem to focus for a minute. That's cool. Neat. All right, we're tracking it in the wide angle. That seems to work pretty good. Yeah, there we go. And there's it in the in the zoomed up shot. So we can see two views because it's got two different cameras. Oh. It's got a close-up shot there. Uh-huh. And then here's the wide shot. Wow. Cool. And nice. done. All right. Oh no, it's on the ground. I think that's a okay, success. Those batteries. All right, so we got about two more days here in California, and we only really had one night of clear skies because it's pretty much been like this since we got here. So anyway, I think we'll go back to Canada and brave the cold to get the rest of the video. All right, it's the first time we've seen the sun in a while. We're gonna set the sea star up on this tack box, which will only be in the sun for a few more minutes. I'm gonna put on the solar filter right here, which seems to just click on magnetically. Okay, so I'm all logged into the app. I'm gonna hit solar system, sun, go gazing. It's gonna tell us to install the filter. We've already done that. Now let's see if it can go directly to the sun. <laughs> Failed to find the sun. Please switch to the wide angle view, tap the sun, and trigger the go function. It didn't like that I turned it on before setting it down. So here we go. Let's try this. Go. There we go. Switch back to this camera. Center target. Okay. All right. Go to 2x. And I think we need to autofocus here because it's minus 13 out. Let's autofocus on those sunspots. Wow, that's cool. And take a photo. You can even adjust the brightness here. Let's go to manual. Uh, I'm gonna turn down the gain, turn up the exposure. Ooh, too bright, right about there. Perfect. Okay, take another photo. There we go. That's a really great image of the sun. So this is actually the first clear skies we've had in almost two weeks. So we're gonna spin this. The other thing I need to make sure is that the anti-dew is turned on. Okay. Now, I 
think we're gonna start with the Horsehead Nebula. Everyone else is doing Orion. Let's do the Horsehead. It's right up there. Although we might wanna focus first. So let's go to Beetlejuice first. All right, we're on Beetlejuice. Let's hit focus. All right, the enhanced exposure is set to 10 seconds. I've never experimented with this before. Let's go up to 20 seconds. It's hard to type with gloves on. Horse, horse head nebula, IC434. Okay, go. Object is center. Okay, so the light pollution filter is on here. Let's frame the shot. Actually, that's pretty well framed. And while we're doing this, I wonder if I can take a picture of the Orion constellation. There we go. Here's what I can see from here. And if we take a photo, even at three seconds, you should be able to see quite a bit of detail there. Yeah, there we go. So we are pointed right at about this star right here. That's Sigma Orionis. Wow, and <laughs> as dim as it is, that's the Horsehead Nebula right there. All right, well, it looks like those 20 second exposures are working. We'll catch you back here in about an hour. Good girl. So we watched a TV show, it was about an hour. It looks like we got 35 minutes of exposure while we were in watching the show. I did notice we're getting the stack failed warning. It might be because of the cold, but so far I haven't touched this at all and it's looking pretty good. I think what we might do is stop this here. We're gonna plug the C-Star directly into the computer, offload the raw file, and see if we can process this to make it look even better. To process the image, I simply dropped it into some free software called Graxpert. Set the stretch to 20% so I could see the image and cropped off the noisy corners. Then I used the default AI settings to do a background extraction and denoise the image. Moving over to Photoshop, I used the camera raw settings to process the image to taste. Now I'm not that great at image processing and your results may vary, but for a $350 telescope, I think these results look pretty good to me. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Seastar S30 telescope. Be sure to subscribe to take your stargazing experience to the next level, add my books to your Amazon wish list, and if you're already a fan of Learn to Stargaze, consider supporting us by joining our channel as a member. And remember, the future is looking up.